Hello, everybody, and welcome to um, our Friday webinar. Today, we are on with Dr. Tom Tolley. Uh, uh, well, hello, <laughs> I, I, I have to, I have to uh, go. Uh, I, I just thought of something. OK. You know, I just thought of something. And I'm, I'm making a mess over here. But, That's OK. <laughs> but but I, I, uh, I. Oh, my to, goodness, that, it's that time of year. Yes. Do you know that it's that time of year? Right. And what the time of year is it? It's Mardi Gras <laughs> in Louisiana. So I have to wear my beads today. There you go. Birds. I have oh, yeah, birds on them. Here, and then I have flamingos for one of the parades nice. here, Spanish Town. So anyway, happy Mardi Gras, everybody. All right. So, That's really uh, yeah. <laughs> it, It's this Tuesday. And um, it's a state holiday. Is it called like uh, Fat Tuesday? What's it called? Is it? Has yeah, it's well, it's called Carnival, but it's it's Mardi Gras, but it's Fat Tuesday, which Mardi Gras means. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Wow. So, you know, yeah, years, so anyway. years ago, I had the pleasure. Of Dr. Rich hosted a conference um, out in those parts, and uh, yes. and we yes. went to that, and we got to go to one of the the family friendly carnival. Um, the family friendly uh, Mardi Gras parade. Yes. It was really fun, super fun. Yes, yes. yes. Well, thank you for coming uh, and speaking <laughs> at that uh, because I, you know that was a fantastic thing. Oh, that was totally fun. Oh my goodness! Wow, I love the beads. Um, and uh, let's see, we got some. We got people logging in, and I'm sure we'll have great questions today. And uh, I'm getting. I have one fun fact that showed up in my news feed yesterday, and I wanted to bring this up because I am so fascinated by this. I think I have like a um, bird in my news search, so any kind of weird, any and in all bird related news stuff pops into my feed. This one, did you know? In California, there's a vehicle code, vehicle code, and it's vehicle code two three one one four, and it says that there's only two things that you can legally um, spill from your car. And one of them is water. So, you know, if you're at the stoplight and you got some water, you're cut up on the ground. The other is feathers from live birds, not dead birds or stuffed birds, but live birds. Mm -hmm. I'm, guessing, I'm guessing chickens on the highway. <laughs> yes. And, and if, if you've ever seen chickens on the highway, you can see things kind of, uh, you know, you know, the, there's a trail, a trail of feathers, uh, you know, with the wind. So that's probably why. Or, you know, if you have your bird in the car and they're flapping oh. and they're little carry in the back, it's fine. They can have yeah, those feathers exactly. coming out the window. I think All there's right. a connection there, you know. There is, so. Right? So feel no free worries. <laughs> no worries. Yeah, oh, I like yeah. it. I like yeah. it. I'll have to find some other obscure animal laws, but I thought that one was really interesting <laughs> because the bird stuff. Um, oh, yeah. You don't want to know some of the animals. <laughs> I'm sure you deal different ones from a vet point of view. Um, speaking yeah. of, um, let's see. If you are, if you have a question today for Dr. Foley, uh, just a gentle reminder to use the Q and A button and not the chat feature, so we can capture the question. And um, are you ready to get started? I'm sure we're going to have lots of questions because we got leftovers from the end of the year and the beginning of the year, probably. <laughs> so. Well. Well, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. Ready to go? Twenty twenty. All right. First. first All right. Group. Yeah. First question is: a uh, twenty-five-year-old Senegal parrot picks his feathers and is wondering if you can help me with this problem. His name is Wiggy. So Wiggy is picking his feathers. What what advice? Where's the starting point on this? Um. Well, the feather destructive behavior. We we've talked about it uh, before. Um. In what you, what you look at is when you have, this is one of the most difficult, if not the, uh, the most difficult um, presentation that we have as, as veterinarians, because there can be many different reasons why the bird is having this behavior. And as I mentioned before, what you'd like to do is, is make sure that the bird does not have any underlying condition that may be causing it to relieve stress or uh, actually respond to stress in the feather destructive manner. So if there's some type of internal, you know, 
uh, disease conditions, say, uh, you know, uh, cancer, infection, um, uh, just uh, renal disease, something with the kidney, liver, um, respiratory, fungal infection, uh, anything parasite um, uh, in, internal uh, in, within the intestinal tract. Um, if there's anything medically that can be treated, that may be <clears throat> that may be all all you need to do to stop you know have the bird stop this feather destructive behavior, um, and and so that to me is is somewhat the the first step. Is the bird sick um, <clears throat> physically, and can it be treated? And if you can, then often uh, the underlying cause treated and then the, the bird would uh, uh, stop uh, the feather destructive behavior. Um, uh, however, if, if the bird is fine and you look at a 25 year old Senegal parrot, um, that is getting up into the, the older age of a Senegal. Uh, I would I would say that probably their average life would be about uh, 30 years uh, on a on a cynical parrot. So you know, it can live longer for sure, and hopefully it lives you know it lives forever uh, you know up to 40 50 years. But but 25 years is is again uh, getting close to the average life expectancy for a cynical. And so you start getting older age issues. And, and so um, then, then all, also what you look at is the husbandry, you know, its environment and also uh, nutrition. Uh, you have, a, have, we talk about nutrition a lot, but uh, you have uh, adequate nutrition, a good diet, a good environment for the bird, then that will help reduce that meaning that it gets sleep, it, 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 it's, uh, you know, the, 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 the cage environment, it's enclosure uh, is good. There's interactive and um, there's interactive uh, 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 toys cage uh, in, within the cage. And, and so that would be psychologically stimulating. <clears throat> and then, then of course, if that's all, all well, then you go into your 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 behavior uh, issues where it it may be something along those lines uh, <clears throat> that it's just a behavior um, psychological situation. Um, but you have to look and try to address all of those things before. One thing that's very helpful, and we've done some studies as far as sunlight, vitamin D in birds. And, and that if you can get uh, your bird out into the sun uh, with you know, one or two times a, a week in a protected area, of course, without predators and, you know, uh, that'll be extremely helpful. I've seen a number of uh, feather destructive behavior birds or birds that are picking their feathers uh, respond to being outside and uh, having uh, uh, showers or uh, having access to water to, to, to bathe in. So I always, I, I say that because, um, you know, inside, I think the vitamin D is, is, will <clears throat> possibly be, be helpful overall. Um, and then the behavior issues, when you go to behavior issues, Laura, I'm gonna say this right now. We could go on all week on the behavior issues and we have webinars and I know that uh, like Chris Davis and, and some of the other uh, fine um, veterinarians that, that have, have talked about this. And then I would say a veterinary behaviorist to work uh, or a, a avian behaviorist that has, has, has quite a bit of uh, um, experience and uh, knowledge in this, and there are a number of them out there, um, but that's where you'd want to go to try to help if it gets to that point. Um, it's, a, it's a great question to start off with. And in a nutshell, you look for 
for your 25 year old Senegal, you look and you make sure that it's there's nothing physically wrong with it. You make sure the environment is good. That includes sunlight. Uh, that includes good nutrition, and uh, <clears throat> and, you, and, you, and so husbandry and nutrition are taken care of. And then it's the behavior issues, and then that's a whole another aspect of it where you have to uh, address those. And, and an avian behaviorist is where to go. And they have a, a number of, um, but then you know that you're, you're dealing with that. So kind of a, when you said that, it's not a simple, oh, well, you give them one of these in the morning and it'll be fine in the afternoon. <laughs> and, and if only there was a magic pill. That I'd like fun. that. I'd like yeah. it, to, you know. <laughs> I wish somebody would give me one of those so, so I could prescribe it to uh, the birds, but it is a, a difficult uh, situation. Uh, but it's a process and, and you just go one step at a time. And I can tell you that uh, we find out and we have, have birds that respond uh, and then others that it's, a, it's a more difficult. Um, so, yeah, but there's a plan, but it's not a simple solution in most cases if you don't yeah. find anything medically wrong. Okay, it could be a marathon instead of a sprint, but you could have Yes, to yes, and it's a sprint if it's like, oh, this is uh, some disease that can be treated. But if it's behavior, it's definitely a marathon, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, and our next question comes from John, um, who has an African gray that's 33 years old. And he says, I know you're not psychic, but how much longer can he live? What's his potential lifespan? Yes, uh, that that's a that's a good question, and and um, and I think Alex the African Gray lived to about that that age. Um, but um, how much longer? You know, what I would do is, as I always say, you know, I try to kind of anthropomorphize here, and um, uh, and and so I would say. The bird is 35 years old? 33. 33. So let's say in, 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 in based on my <clears throat> um, just historical observation uh, with the uh, medium-sized parrots, African grays, Amazon parrots, and the knowledge of the disease conditions and that they, uh, that are, are rather common uh, as they increase in age. Um, I would say that that 33 year old African gray is, is say like a 78 to, to 82 year old man or woman here in the United States. Okay. So that's about what the average <laughs> life expectancy is for a man or woman in the United States may be higher in Japan, it may be lower in some other country, but that's, that's here. So I would say it's a 78 to 80 year old uh, human here. Now, how long can they live? I think I just saw somebody that passed away at like 110 or 111. So, you know, I, I, I'm not psychic. You know, I'd be in Las Vegas now if I was, but the, 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 you know, it, you know, good care and all, and that's, that's, you have the control over uh, as much as you can do to increase, just like we could exercise, we could have proper diets, we could take supplementation, we can do everything to maintain our health, to live as long as we can, but there's things that are out of our control. What you can do is the same thing for your birds. You can provide them proper environment. You can pro provide them proper nutrition, proper care. And that's going to be, you know, any healthcare, what have you, that's going to give you the best chance of having that bird reach its highest potential of life expectancy. So I can say that you have the control to enable it to reach as far as it can go. 
and let's see. Um, okay, uh, so David has, says, hello gang. Uh, how is diabetes treated in older cockatiels? And is it linked to diet or genetics or both? So we're talking about diabetes um, in cockatiels. Yeah, um, well, let's put it this way. Um, um, it's uh, diabetes and cockatiels. It's, it's like, um, well, you uh, know, I appreciate this question. So it's, it's a good question. Um, because it's like, well, uh, diabetes, uh, mellitus, uh, where your birds, uh, will be, uh, uh, drink a lot of water and urinate, uh, have high blood glucose levels. And so, um, the kind of as the question is, um, it's not a common disease condition. We see many birds and over 35 years, I think we may have diagnosed three or four. So it's not something that is like commonly seen, but we have had cases of it and we'll, we'll provide a, uh, a, an insulin uh, to the birds. Uh, the problem is, is that sometimes the, <clears throat> the, uh, uh, <laughs> the products that we need to use um, are not available. Uh, and I would say across the board, um, most of those, you know, in the cases that we've treated and, and known and, is that the utilization of the insulin isn't um, hasn't been researched to say this is the dose for this particular species, but in but we have and we have been able to kind of control the um, the the uh, the glucose level uh, in the birds with it. Um, some better, some not, but it has to be given every day. Uh, we've had issues on some of those, those cases. The cases that I can recall have been in macaws and maybe a couple of parrots, um, but I know a macaw for sure, but it's, it's the, every day you have to give the medication for the rest of the bird's life. And that is hard for any owner to do. And, um, and, and again, for each species, it has to be kind of, you have to kind of work the the uh, the dosage out to see what dose is uh, correct. Uh, so it's it's difficult uh, for that. And um, but anyway, so we do see it treated with uh, an insulin product uh, that hasn't really been validated for any of the species that we're talking about. It's specifically cockatiels. It's a rare rare disease condition that we see in birds but if your cockatiel has it um, yes it does occur um, but uh, can be treated but it it takes uh, some manipulation of the dosage to get it right and it's uh, treatment for every day uh, for the rest of the bird's life on that and um, yeah okay okay and this next question comes from jay it says that um, uh, recent, uh, let's see, recent uh, DX of secondary pacemaker in 23 year old African gray male. Um, the cardio workup is done, normal blood work, normal heart size, prominent uh, break, uh, sorry, brachybalic artery. What are your thoughts? Uh, so, can you repeat that? <laughs> sorry, that's a <about>, mouthful. Yeah. <laughs> Let, let's, go, let's go slow. Let's go slow. Okay, I'm going to go not, very slow. This is an African slow. gray, 23-year-old yeah. African gray. Correct, a male. Male. Um, and uh, recent DX, so whatever DX is. Yeah, right. well, the recent diagnosis. Okay, that's good to know because, yeah, that's a simple one. Uh, recent diagnosis of secondary pacemaker. Of secondary, yeah, th that's... Um, a secondary pacemaker is not a, you know, I'm, I'm not familiar with that term. I mean, is there a primary pacemaker? Is that? 
Any pacemaker? No, okay. no, pacemaker is something that, you know, no, no. That would be kind of revolutionary. No, it? So, so let's go on. So. Okay. All right. We'll uh, maybe get some more and, info on that. Question. And yeah. 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 We got to get a little bit more information because that's not, I'm sorry. I, you know, thank you for the question, but if there's something, you know, yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, well, we'll circle back to that if we um, yeah. get a little more info. Um, okay, here we have a long one. Uh, this one's from SG. Um, if you could tell us about your experience with uh, birds that, with lymphoma, um, more specifically, I'd like to know about the progression of the disease and how long birds have survived after diagnosis. Uh, her 30, uh, their 30 year old was diagnosed after experiencing weight loss in late December, and they decided to treat him with, um, uh, Onzior, is that right? O-N-S-I-O-R, once a week. He's doing well, has gained weight for five weeks in a row, but they'd like to get some idea of what to expect. Mm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, I can, uh, um, you know, each, each case is different uh, with lymphoma. Um, and uh, with the... Uh, with the, uh, the birds. And one of the issues that you have is again, um, we're, we're looking at these, uh, the chemotherapeutic drugs. Um, there hasn't been um, a lot of, um, I guess, validation of the chemotherapeutic drugs in, in birds. Um, but we are uh, always willing to to try um, to to see uh, if if we can get a get an effect. Um, I think we had a little oh I think it was a little it was a little parakeet of some of some sort. It was about 45, 50 grams um, that had lymphoma. And it had had different uh, um, different presentations. So so your your bird, and it's about thirty. Did she say 30, 30 years? Um, yeah, thirty years old. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and, and sometimes I feel like the older the bird, the less aggressive uh, the the uh, the lymphoma is. And so I think that uh, there's a, the possibility of that if you do have some success in treatment, that it'll be better for the older birds. Um, uh, there's there's the side effects with the, the, the chemotherapy and, and you should be aware of them and uh, make sure that you monitor the bird, uh, your little bird, uh, the best you, you can to try to be aware of it if there's any side effects that occur so you can you can communicate with your with your veterinarian uh, so that they can uh, reassess at that time do we continue treatment do we stop treatment yeah. um, also um, many times during uh, the chemotherapy um, there's blood um, um, diagnostic tests that need to be be um, um, performed um, a lot of times uh, the chemotherapeutic agents uh, uh, really target fat rapidly developing cells like cancer cells so that's good when they they target to to kill these rapidly developing cells but also your blood cells are rapidly dividing in your marrow and so that's a side effect uh, with chemotherapy uh, when uh, you, you, you become anemic or you have low white blood cell counts. And so, um, and, and with, like I said, some of these, these chemotherapeutic agents that are used in different species, this may be the first time that this has been used or there's no information on this within that species uh, of bird that you have to try to monitor the patient and regulate the dose to make sure that the, the bird is being able to handle that. It sounds at this point that you're doing well. I, I mean, I'm very happy that the bird is doing well. And so um, with any 
with any cancer treatment, it's, it's, it's one day at a time. And so you, 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 do everything possible to support uh, the little bird, uh, and then then monitor and then treat. Um, I don't think that you're looking, and I would say don't expect that uh, this will cure the the little bird. But um, who knows how long that the little bird will be able to live um, with the uh, the treatment. Uh, because there's nothing out there that says, oh, well, the average, uh, you know, uh, life expectancy of the bird after diagnosis of lymphoma at 30 years of age, treating with this drug is three years. We don't know that. Just but, uh, to interject that the bird is, uh, I believe, a Nandi Conyer. So. Okay, yeah. yeah. So this may be the first time that this has been actually used on an ANDA, but it's been used on other birds and that's what we have and, and, you know, to do. So, um, and ANDA conures can be tough little birds too. So that's good. Um, so I, I, I think at this point, things look positive and, uh, and again, you know, make sure you're aware of the side effects so you can watch for those. Uh, and also during chemotherapy, make sure you go to the appointments to monitor the, the, as I said, the blood diagnostic test, looking for anemia, looking at the white cells, because you can, uh, this happens in humans, you get low white blood cell counts, and that's not good. You're susceptible to infection. And so do, do what, you know, the, what the process is. And I think that there's a, um, Right now, it's good, and uh, and so just continue that. There's there's nothing to say that it can't continue to be um, uh, a positive with that. But that's kind of in general, Laura. That's just with uh, cancer and chemotherapy or treatments. Um, we we're utilizing it, but we're kind of extrapolating it from other other species and the oncologists who are familiar with the drugs are doing their best to try to use it with birds. Um, our little parakeet, we, we treated for about five days and with chemotherapy and it just did not, it, it had too many side effects and we had to stop. So uh, this, this case is, uh, and of course this, this Nanday's uh, twice as big at least, um, or, or three times as big. So that the, the larger the, the patient, I think the better the chance, but not always, but, but good. All right, and then um, Gloria has a, I don't know if we've received this question before. This is, uh, uh, what should caregiver do immediately when a bird chews through an electrical cable and receives a shock when you're not able to get to an avian vet until the morning. So bird chewing through a cord, getting a shock, what do you do? Um, <clears throat> I'm just trying to, to um, kind of take into account um, what, what injuries would occur we're going to say, not like someone struck by lightning. We're going, to, we're going to say the bird survived. Okay. We're going to be, you know, okay. So it chews to a cord. It goes, ah, you know, I, I got shocked. Um, the it's, it's, it's all dependent upon what, what the, um, what the, uh, what the injuries are and how severe the injuries are associated with it. If the, if the, because what you normally will have, there's nothing, uh, <clears throat> I love the question. Uh, there's, there's, you know, as far as the initial shock, that is probably if the bird survives that, there's not, I don't think going to be, you know, either it dies or it, or it survives. And, and I said that like, 
if it survives, there's not going to be, I don't believe, much based on some of the birds that I've seen that have been shocked, um, like raptors that come in with uh, look like a scarecrow because they've just been really just fried um, from a power line. Um, so, so I don't think that there's going to be any damage to the, the, the overall ability, but the damage would be in what I've seen in, in rabbits. I haven't really seen it in birds, but I've seen in rabbits, you have burns in the mouth area. And so, uh, <clears throat> you know, I don't, if you have to, you know, if you have any, any type of pain medication that you have for the birds, then, then that would, you know, from some of, you know, that's been prescribed, that would be, that would be helpful. Um, it's hard to, if, if there was uh, any, any external burns around here um, that, uh, that it, it, it just, just to make sure that it's, it, it may be cool, uh, at that time, um, it, it, it wouldn't, uh, uh, hurt to just, uh, uh, at, at, you know, at that time, put a little, uh, neosporin if it, if it extends out, but nothing in the oral cavity. And there's, there's really little you can do uh, at home, if it if it does that, if you don't have any pain medication for the bird at the at the house, um, is just to, to to make it comfortable as you can um, at that at that point, because I think it will all be within the oral oral cavity. All right. Yeah. Right. Um, and then we have a question. Um, let's see from Bonnie and Gabriel. Uh, they, they listened to a workshop on beaks and it was done by a vet. They have a 15 month old cockatiel who has a very dark upper beak, which changed over time. And they've had him since he was a baby. The vet lecturer said can be abnormal um, and, and, and indicative of health disease. Um, the bird vet oh, says- wait, just, wait, 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 wait. Indicative of what? Of a disease, um, oh. of, a, of a health issue. And, but their, their bird vet said it's just pigmentation. Um, so wanted to get baseline blood work, um, though not recommended for a one-year-old. What are your thoughts on dark be beaks? Only the top one is dark and then uh, blood work on a um, 15 month, on a one-year-old, is it recommended? Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, uh, you know, the uh, one-year-old cockatiel is fully grown. Um, and so, um, yeah, I mean, that, that would be, that would be, uh, you know, good. Uh, I'm sorry, Gabriel's the bird. Sorry. I said uh, Bonnie and Gabriel, the, the, uh, just to clarify. Gabriel. Gabriel. No, no. So <laughs> I, I, I think that any, any coloration of the beak, I don't really, I don't, uh, uh, maybe, uh, the sear or the, the coloration of a sear and a budgie or something like that may may but there's nothing scientifically connected to to that um uh, it uh, uh you have uh, uh a discoloration of the of the skin uh and it, it turns <clears throat> blue <laughs> that means that they're not uh getting enough oxygen to the to the um or that there's vascular, there's not an, an oxygen, not necessarily just breathing oxygen in to oxygenate, oxygenate the blood, but it's also a situation where you may have constriction and you're not having blood flow. Um, but as far as the beak is concerned, I would, I would agree that I think it's, you know, and not seeing the bird, you know, but I would say that uh, in most case, you know, just about everything, it would just be uh, the uh, pigmentation. Um, but a uh, one-year-old cockatiel should weigh 90, if it's a big one, it could weigh 110 grams, but, but between 90 and if it's a small one, you're, you're looking at about 70 grams. So, so you should be able to get enough blood for a, a one mil for a, a CBC and a chem panel. So no, yeah, yeah. 
but I would say the pigmentation uh, is the beak discoloration. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then um, RB had a question about an older gray that has a boil like growth on the bottom of his foot. Um, let's see. It, it lan they lanced it and the swelling has shrunk, but he's still unable to perch on it. So he sleeps on the cage floor. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <clears throat> So he sleeps on the cage floor? Yeah, and he has a boil-like growth on the bottom of his foot. It's mm -hmm. been lanced. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, um, birds uh, have a tendency to, to get um, what we call pododermatitis. It's also called uh, uh, commonly AKA bumblefoot. Um, and this is a um, uh, when they, you know, there, there's not much on the bottom of birds' feet. Um, you have, you have bone, you have tendons, and you have basically little fat pads over the exposed area and then skin. And then of course, muscles, uh, I mean, uh, nerves and, and, uh, vessels, not much there. And so, um, this, if there is some, uh, issues with weight bearing, they can get pressure on these 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 feet, and uh, and it can can uh, cause this uh, the the skin with that pressure and just standing on the same place every day. That's why we recommend having perches that are varying diameters, like natural wood perches, because it they're not on the same area of the foot all the time. And this will help reduce and, and, and also distribute that weight of the bird on those little feet that it's just really bone and skin and some fat pads. And <clears throat> birds do well with that. They've evolved fantastic. But however, if they're, they're sitting all the time on it and they may be a little overweight or not, and they're on the same diameter perch, then these can, this can occur. It basically kind of suffocates the skin and then you can have it break and the skin, because it's thin, because it's thin and, and kind of uh, uh, pinkish coloration. And then when it breaks, there, a bacteria can get through that skin and cause an infection or a boil, an abscess, a granuloma. And this is, this is how pododermatitis, it's basically inflammation of the foot. That's what pododermatitis means, inflammation of the foot. And it can be uh, infection and it can get big. I've seen lesions, when you're saying uh, a boil, uh, I've seen growths on the base of a swan's foot as big as an egg, two eggs. And the swan is actually walking around on like two eggs under its foot. Yeah. Yes, and so this can happen. Now, that's how it commonly occurs. We call that pressure necrosis because that pressure causes that skin to die. Now, it also, if the, if the bird gets a puncture wound, it can also, just like it can, if you get a nail in your foot, can cause an infection, right? That's why you get a tetanus shot. And, but if it, you know, something pokes its foot, then it could seed bacteria in there and cause it. Now, just just lancing, you know, depending. Now, now this could have uh, come if it, if it was a boil and there wasn't an opening there, then it's, if it was uh, an infection, then then what you're what you're looking at is trying to to find out what bacteria is in there and treat it properly. Sometimes what you have to you know, and I'm sure that your veterinarian is doing a great job. I, I, I you know, um, it's uh, you have to uh, uh, get the antibiotic from wherever you're giving it in the mouth all the way down to the foot. 
and there's not a lot of vessels down there. And there's all this bacteria, this all the cells and, and building a wall up. And it's easy to build a wall way down there in the feet. So sometimes you have to go into the wall and put, you put beads in there and you can put uh, um, where they have little antibiotic impregnated beads and you put it in the bottom of the, in the foot so you can treat it topically there. You can treat systemically, orally, but sometimes you've got to go directly to where it is. Mm. And then, so that's an option to treat this type of uh, situation because, uh, and also, um, you know, what you're looking at is you're looking at a progression with this, this injury, this boil on the bottom of the foot, as you call it, from being lanced and treated to continued resolution. So you're looking for it to get better every day. And so is it getting better every day with the current treatment or is it just not getting better every day? And also if it's painful, then again, there should possibly be, you know, and, and, and these are things that you need to share with your, your veterinarian. You know, you need to say, hey, you know, he's, he's not perching on it, you know, then there needs to be pain management. There needs to be analgesia. It's like if you, <clears throat> again, have a sore on your foot and you can't walk, you're going to need to have it treated and you want to have some kind of a pain uh, control uh, on that. So, um, you know, like, like uh, we use meloxicam uh, uh, quite a bit. And then there's other medications that you can use. And meloxicam's just like uh, Medicam and that they, they prescribe it to humans too. Um, so some of you may have had that, but it's like a um, Advil. It's, a, it's a, what they call a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drug. So, so yeah. anyway, that's, that's what we're looking at. They, they did mention that they treated it like it was bumblefoot, but it didn't seem infected and, and he's still favoring it. Well, that's good. And did they say it was bumblefoot or they thought it was, or they described um, it as bumblefoot? They treated it like it was, um, uh -huh. but it didn't seem to be infected. Uh, yeah, that, yeah, and that's good. Now that's, you know, and what you bring up there is it wasn't <clears throat> infected. And so what we'll do is what we'll do is we'll, will go in and all of the affected or the abnormal tissue and we will remove that. That's one option, remove it. And then we will close it up if it's not infected. And so we'll, and so that, that because bumblefoot lesions or pododermatitis lesions can take time to heal. Mm -hmm. And so we'll go ahead and, and close it to to um, make sure that it it uh, it, it has a, a quicker healing time when you're looking at ten to fourteen days if you have primary closure as opposed to letting it and primary closures like using suture in in stitches and the other the other aspect is sometimes uh, you can put little pads on the foot if the bird is amenable to it. And, and make it where it's kind of uh, foam, foam little, to take the pressure off of the foot so that, um, you know, it's not as painful to perch. We've done, done that too. Interesting, okay. Yeah. Um, we have a question from Kelly that uh, says that I have birds and also work in a pet store. With everything going on, cuddle bone is hard to find right now. So they're wondering if it is okay to give the reptile one, which is, I think, sepia bone. Um, would that be okay to give birds? So can you? What, what kind of bone? S-E-P-I-A. -S sepia bone. S-I-P-I. -S -E, I'm sorry. S-E-P-I-A, which um, it sounds like that's what they give to reptiles as like their version of cuddle bone. Um, is it something that you could give a bird for? Yeah. Um, 
you know, I'd have to, I, I'm, I'm, you know, the homework assignment for you. you know, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I have to, you know, F C P I A. I mean, see reptiles. I see reptiles, but you know, uh, F C P I A S E P I A. So sep. Yeah. Sep the bone. Yes. And, and, um, I would, you know, I'm, I'm not going to say for sure, but it probably is. But if you work in a pet store, you have a hard time getting cuddle bone at this time. Um, I would say that uh, there should be uh, mineral blocks that you should be able to put into the, the cage. Um, it is, you know, so, yeah. you know, so... So anyway, I just um, looked at, I just did a quick Google and uh, it says, um, according to Wikipedia, uh, it's sepia bones, also known as cuddle bones. Sounds well, like there you go. So, so yes. Yeah. So we learn something every day. But that's, you know, I, I that's just a quick, quick Google. But no, um, that's good. We're going to, we're going to go, go for it. I think I did see somebody mention that too. Um, but, uh, so that's a big yes on that. It's the same thing. Um, and the, I guess the, the reptile, they're, they're diverting it from the birds to the reptiles. So, you know, you know, let's get that. But the mineral blocks are there. Uh, and, and, and so um, you can, those are options too. Um, I, I don't have uh, cuddle bone in with my budgies. I have a mineral block and they, you know, it's not like, it, and so it lasts for a long time. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then Kimberly wanted to know, what are ways to handle a grieving bird that lost an owner? Oh, is there like a, I guess a sign of, um, of, of loss in, in, in the flock, you know, birds um, might be yeah. a little depressed. They were... You know, um, <clears throat> the the only the only uh and and, and again uh this is where an avian behaviorist uh, would would be uh something to uh really expand on that because i i think it's important um and then uh you know in my experience that um it takes uh some birds longer than others to adjust and adapt and uh, somebody, you know, you know, may argue, and there, there could be a, a valid argument that they never do um, really uh, recover from it. And, and so um, I, I would just say um, the, the, the best way uh, that I would, I would uh, just in my, my personal opinion, would be to try to um, keep things as, as, as normal as possible yeah. and, and, and not have uh, ab abrupt changes. We're all creatures of habit. Um, uh, whether we want to believe it or not, we can rationalize why uh, change happens. Uh, but that, doesn't, that still doesn't make it easier for us. And sometimes we don't even accept it when we can rationalize. Um, but, you know, uh, birds uh, and animals um, just don't have the ability to say, oh, well, she was sick and, and I know that, you know, and so um, with that, that's a change. And so the comfort would be in trying to maintain what they're used to. So the, the more that you can do that, I think that that would help the transition as much as anything. And that would be interacting with the bird and, 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 and doing what it allows you to do for, for it. Um, I, I, you know, I wouldn't try to, if the bird doesn't seem to be accepting of that, then I wouldn't try to push uh, on that, but that's just just my thoughts um, in trying to 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 make that transition. Uh, on that. Okay. 
Um, and then uh, Laura asked a question. Um, they bought a Feather Bright Bulb um, conversion kit with full spectrum and UV light after hearing about it um, on our last webinar. They are planning on using it um, in a hanging lamp over the African Grey's cage. How close should it be over her cage and for how long can you use it each day? So they're gonna set up this um, Feather Light Bulb conversion mm -hmm. kit over the bird's cage. Yeah. Um, it, it, it does, and those are excellent questions. Excellent questions. Um, the the one thing that I will always mention whenever you have a product such as this, uh, a full spectrum UVB light, that what the instructions say on there are extremely important. How close should it be to the animal? Okay, that that should be on there because it, it'll say, well, within this distance is where you're going to have the effect. As I mentioned, if you're looking at the ceiling, you're not gonna have the full effect of that or, or very little effect of that if it's that far away under most, most products such as this. But it has to be within Oh, uh, I, I guess uh, 24 inches or so uh, where the animal is. But that, that particular product that you have should have that listed on there. Um, so it, and, and it could be on for the 12 hours if, you know, it's not going to, you know, uh, or, you know, you can... Uh, so it doesn't matter how, you know, uh, long, I mean, during the daylight hours, you know, you can, you can vary it, but I think having that um, will be, be good, but it's, uh, you know, having it on, it's not going to, uh, to, to hurt the animal in any way. Um, it'd be like it's out in the sunlight or out, in the, you know, uh, all day. Um, so I would just make sure that it's about the same, same, length of time uh, that it's on is what the sunlight is outside. So you can vary that. And the other thing that I wanted to mention was, look at the expiration. Yes. Look at the expiration. This, this is very important for these products, these UVB full spectrum, because when it says it's only good for this long, that's as long as it's good for. The light will still work, but the effect of the, the UVB is not there. So it could, it could work. It could only, with you using it, it, whatever produces that effect in the bulb is only good for what the product says. So if it says it's six months, if it says it's a year, you write it down because that bulb will still be, you could turn it on every day for five years, but it's only good for one year. For the other four years, you haven't been, you've just been having a light on. Yeah. So keep that in mind. The distance is important, dependent upon the product, the length of time that you, you use it is dependent on what the product says, the expiration date and, uh, <clears throat> and, and, and so, there you go. All right. All right. Um, those are some good points on lighting, which is good to have. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, Frank wanted to know, um, our, actually it's our, it's our treat of, it's our, uh, diet of the, the day. Um, are, are Lefebvre's sunny orchard pellet berries, which are 81% pellets and 19% fruit and grains, a viable diet for a five-year-old blue fronted Amazon? You're asking, asking me. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There as a main diet, like as a, a yes, they, yes, the, 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 they're a foraging diet and they can be used as the, uh, and they can be in uh, the main diet for the, for the bird. Yes, very much so. And very much so. And it's just a different uh, form of uh, uh, a pellet, uh, a pelleted diet. And, and so, yes, very much so, yeah. 
All right. Um, I think that is our last question for today. Um, let's see if I have anything else here. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I jumped the gun. It's actually, so they wanted, they, their question was about the, um, uh, let's see. Yeah, the sunny orchard nutri berry. Sorry, uh, that's a complete diet. Yeah, I saw Laura something. Somebody mentioned something about the uh, the the Lefebvre vitamins in the water. Yeah, I want to ask that one real quick. Yeah, and 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 uh, by all means, uh, supplementation is is fantastic. Um, but uh, follow the directions, and uh, and I, I recommend because of um, uh, the the vitamins. Uh, and degrade over over time that you want to make sure the water is fresh daily uh, if you use vitamin supplementation in the water but i i highly recommend that um, if you if you do that okay hey i have a question or a follow-up question to that is um <laughs> I'm just imagining, you know, you put the vitamin in the water what if your bird likes to bathe in the water before like can it bathe in vitamins <laughs> yeah it can I, I, you know, uh, with the, with the concentration that you have, um, that's like, uh, well, if you don't drink it, you can, I'll dunk you in it, you know, um, <laughs> but, uh, if it does, um, then, then of course, um, that's, um, uh, it, with the concentration that the vitamins are, that you mix it in, that it's not going to be a problem. Hopefully, I, you know, that you have zipper bottles and you don't have to worry about it. You can spray or keep, you know, put the, 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 the bath water in there, but, uh, you know, the water uh, for the bird to, to bathe in. Um, but, uh, you know, my little cynical, just uh, my Derbian, he'd go for the zipper bottle. I didn't have any issues. My cynical is just like, no, not doing it. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm going to, you know, I have the zipper bottle there. I want to make the transition, but I just, you know, but anyway, that's, that's the fun thing. I love it. You yeah. Know? There you go. That's yeah. funny. Uh, all right. So we got, um, we have, a, I have a, today's a giveaway winner to announce uh, shortly, but I just wanted to give a sneak preview of uh, our next webinar, which will be on March 4th, the Friday, March 4th. And that is uh, Parrots and Hormones, Is It Time for the Talk? And that's with uh, Dr. Stephanie Lamb. So that's upcoming. And then uh, Dr. Tully, we'll see you back um, at the end of March for another wonderful episode of Ask the Vet. And we'll go through well, some fascinating well, looking questions. forward to it. Spring, you know, at the end of March. And uh, fantastic questions today. I mean... Oh, Lord, I, I you know, just uh, really enjoy it. And uh, thank you for all of you that attend. Uh, and it's, it's just wonderful. Um, I never know what uh, what's going to come through. And I think we all learned quite a bit today. Yes, this yes, all the, all these are such great questions. And you never know what you're going to get. And the way that you're answering them. Um, so, so, so with so much informative information, just information for everyone it's 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 you just you had that bet mind <laughs> seen a few birds <laughs> there you go you've seen a few you've, all right we're getting a bunch of thank yous um, of course everyone appreciates your time uh so i'm gonna send us off uh with a um this this is what our winner of today's giveaway is jay so jay congratulations i'm going to do my screen share of what you are going to be receiving let's hope this works Fine. <laughs> you never know. This is okay. always my favorite part, Laura. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Mine as well. Um, Mariah just got in these new new okay. that he hasn't had before. He's Wait, let me try this again. Okay, this is Dr. Lamb's um, Arroyo. And there we go. Mariah just got in these new new that he hasn't had before. These ones have cranberries, apricots, So and that is what you are going to be receiving today, as well as another uh, lip your product of your choice. Here. And as you mentioned, uh, the, so the, the Nutriberries, uh, all share. the varieties, these like, can be offered as a main goes. diet. Mm -hmm. Or as a, or and they offer foraging funds. So Royal certainly is excited about this. <laughs> yes, very much so. Wow. 
I, what I what I love about Amazon's especially is that little zeal that they get when they get a food that they really like. They have that little squeal. I'm sure a lot of that just, the Amazon squeal good. just melts my heart. <laughs> Let's wait for it. Let's see if we can. A little bit of eye pinning there. Eye pinning usually means it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think you must be satisfied with this new flavor. There we go. Great job, Arroyo. All right. And you can also, you know, have a mix of the different types of Nutri Berries, right? We've got, I believe you've got a, a yeah, bunch of berries. This one before. Is it good? Yeah. You find it enjoyable? There you go. Um, that's a little bit of, I, I said last time, I'll say it again. That's a little bit of a, of a spring in your winter is this diet right here. <laughs> that's a, it's really good, huh? Yes, right. Sunny Orchard. And yeah, that's the Sunny Orchard one. There we go. And that is the February product of the month. And believe it or not, February is like, it's gone in a few days here. So <laughs> it's going by so fast. Um, yep. Mardi Gras though. Mardi that's Gras. Right. There's okay. Sunny Orchard. Mardi Gras. So there right. you go. All right. Well, everybody on that <laughs> note, um, you have a fun Mardi Gras next week. We'll, we'll, we'll live vicariously through you. <laughs> yes, <laughs> you well, say. Dr. Rich. Dr. Oh, yeah, Rich is riding in Bacchus on Sunday night. And also I want to say happy Mardi Gras to all of the, the South Alabama Caged Bird Society members wow. in Mobile, because that's a big, that's a big celebration over in Mobile and Baldwin County over there. So all right. Maybe we'll have people, let's invite people to put some um maybe some Mardi Gras themed uh photos uh, of your birds celebrating Mardi Mardi Gras. Um, on our and send it to people we put on the Facebook page or something. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. So, but thank you, Dr. Tolley. Thank you very thank much. You, Once again, a wonderful episode of Ask the Vet. And then we'll see you back here um, in the uh, next month. So everyone have a great, great weekend. All the best to you and your flock and everyone stay safe. Till then. Yes. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye.